In this mini-series, we'll be exploring the truths behind the Titanic. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what factors had an impact on passenger survival. Now, what this mini-series is really about, what's at the core of it, is how to do data science. What different methods, what kind of data transformations can we apply to an extensive data set to extract crucial information from it? We're going to be applying all those things to this Titanic data set right here. The first thing is look at what columns we have. So we have passenger ID, just a list from one through however, mass, however many uh, passengers we have. In this case, we see that we have about 891 passengers uh, in the data set. Now, it's true that there was more than this many passengers on board the actual Titanic, but this is a random sample uh, of a few passengers. And I chose this data set because it's the cleanest one I found online, the one that contains the most relevant information uh, that ends up helping us towards attaining our goals in the end. So we'll be using it. It's sizable, so it's not like we have any size issues uh, immediately. Now, let's explore the other columns. We have this passenger class. So first, second, third class, just like you would have the name of certain passengers. So we have some of the male passengers some of the female passengers. We have sex, which tells you if they're male or female. We have their age. We see some are missing. Then we have this thing called SIBSPA, which is sibling spouses. How many siblings or spouses you have? Could be one, zero, three. We have as high as four. It could be higher. We have PARCH, which is how many parents or children you have on board. Could be, again, zero, one, two, and so on. Uh, we have your ticket number, which is not so crucial to us. It's just kind of which number was on your ticket. Um, what is very important to us, though, is the fare, how much you paid to be on this. Of course, that's correlated to your passenger class for a second, third. Uh, next thing we have is which cabin you're in. The important thing we see here is we have these huge gaps, a lot of missing information, which tells us this is not very important. And we also see that in things like age and a few other columns. So we're going to deal with that. Last thing we have is embarked, which is which port you embarked onto the Titanic. There's either S, C, or Q. We'll see that later. Now, the next thing we want to try to do is figure out our immediate goal, at least our first goal. And our first goal here is going to be try to figure out whether a passenger will survive or not survive the Titanic based on some things about them that we see in this table. So that is, we want to either sort them into the zero category, meaning they did not survive, or the one category, meaning that they did survive the Titanic. Um, and we want to try to figure out whether it's a zero or one based on certain things um, about this passenger relative to other passengers. So what can we use in this table that's going to help us? So passenger class seems like a big deal because first, second, third class kind of helps determine how much uh, safety you had. But things like name, uh, things like cabin, or things like ticket are kind of all the same for, they, they kind of are all identify a certain passenger and don't really have much bearing in um, whether they are survive or not. So then we have things like sex, which could be a factor. Age could definitely be a factor because it could help determine how fast you can get off the ship, for example. Uh, we have things like how many parents or children you have, how many siblings or spouses you have. That could also potentially be a factor because if you have more children, you're going to want to make sure they're safe um, before you consider your own safety, possibly. Um, and also a big thing that we're going to use is the fare, how much you paid. Of course, this is going to be correlated to your class because if you paid more, you're probably in a higher um, first class, second class rather than third class. Now, the next thing we're going to do, and something you should do very early on in these kind of projects, is make a list of summary statistics for the different columns in our data set. Now, this can be things such as means, percentages, uh, correlations, which are the exact things that we have in our table, our little chart here on the right. But you can also include things like standard deviations, uh, things like that if, that, if you think that'll be helpful. So basically, the reason we do this is try to get a feel for the data. We want to try to figure out, oh, what's the mean of this column? Uh, what's the correlation between this column and this column? Because when we go forward and do our more extensive studies, such as regressions and machine learning techniques, we don't want to waste our time and do things that we could easily show early on have no relation to each other. We want to focus on factors that we have uh, initially shown that have a little bit of proof that they have some impact on each other or that they're highly correlated with each other, um, either negatively or positively. So the first thing, and the only thing we'll just take straight from the table, is the number of passengers, which is 891, which is the last entry here in uh, passenger ID. So we'll scroll up and we'll paste that uh, right in that column right there. Uh, let me change the color back to green we had. Okay, so now we're just having a bunch of means. To do this, we just say equals, average, and then we just put the column you want to take the mean of, and then you just hit enter, and it'll show you the mean. So similarly, we do the means for every other column. It's pretty much routine, but let's talk about the mean that we just calculated up there. Uh, the mean of survived is what? That's actually the percentage that survived because the mean is calculated as summing all of it. So it's going to sum all the ones, which is the number of survivors over the total size over 891. So it's a percentage survival. So here we have the means for, uh, here we have the means for all of our, uh, many of the numerical columns that we have. So the next thing we're going to do is find the percentage of first, second, and third class. So here's the syntax for that. You write sum, but only if, and then you put the column you're looking at. So in this case, the column we're looking at is, 
is a P class, which is the C column, if that is equal to one comma one comma zero. So the only important entry here is the first thing, the, the before the first comma, that tells you which number you're looking for. So uh, you'll see the difference here. So when we do second class, we're gonna do equals sum if, and again, we do the same exact column because we're looking at the same piece of data, P class, is equal to two comma one comma zero. So we're looking at, we're only summing them, only figuring out how many entries have the value two in it. So, and we're dividing all that by 891, which is the total number of entries. Um, that we have. So we have sum again if the column is equal to three comma one comma zero, and we're dividing that by eight hundred ninety one, and we have this last number. To make sure we're doing a sanity check, we're going to do equals sum. We're going to sum all three of these numbers. We should get one hundred percent, right? Um, and we do and get one, which is one hundred percent. So that is a good reality check. Next thing is male female. This is a little exercise in transforming data, at least at a very basic level, because this is not given in numbers. This is given in male versus female. So we'll do a replace. Replace all instances of female with the number one. We'll do replace all. And we're going to replace all instances of male with the number zero. This is going to help us do more numerical analysis. It's going to be a little more convenient for us down the road. Now that we have this, we can do the exact same thing. Uh, to do, we want to find the percentage of uh, females, right? So really, we should take the average of the bottom column, not this one. So we want to find the average of the uh, sex. And since one is female, we'll do the average of that, which will give us 35% female. And we could just easily do one minus the 35% to get the percentage male. Now let's talk about these really fast. Now that we have all these numbers, before we go into correlations, um, we see that we have 891 passengers and we see a survival rate of 38.4%. So that's not too great. Um, but that number will be very important later on because it's going to be uh, used in a formula, which will generate a number which will tell us the baseline. Uh, if we have a dumb strategy, which will try to predict whether someone survives or not, the dumb strategy has a certain probability of success. So that's the probability to beat. Because if we can't even beat the dumb strategy success rate, then we might as well not even do any of this analysis. Now, the next thing we're looking at is the mean of the fares, which is $32. Remember, this is 1912. In today's money, how much is that $32? So how much you're paying for this cruise ticket? It's actually, if you do the uh, calculation with the inflation rates, it's actually $771.94. So it's, it's a sizable amount for a ticket. So this was actually, this is obviously a big deal for this cruise. Uh, mean sibling spouse, mean parent children, we have 0.52 and 0.38 respectively. Um, we can actually do a little check here. So since sibling spouse and parent children are mutually exclusive, you can't really have a sibling parent or spouse, child, and combinations like that, we can do a new column here called total family size, which is just a sum of your parent children and your sibling spouse for each person. And that's kind of a proxy for how big your family was on board, how many people you had on board that are, you know, directly related to you or that you came with. So we'll fill in that column uh, and we'll go ahead and lay, uh, we'll label it as family size. And we'll take the average of this family size column, and it should be equal to the sum of the averages of the parent children and the sibling spouse, because the sum of averages, the average of a sum is equal to some of the averages. So we see we have 0.904. And if we take the sum of these two, we should also get 0.904. Yeah, we do. So the math works out. Um, so that's just good to know. We can use that new column later on. That was a very crude, that was a very crude uh, actually data transformation that we did. We took two columns and combined them to make a new column. We might go forward and make different data transformations for different columns, uh, combining some of the different data in less trivial ways than we just did. The next thing we want to talk about is the percentage first, second, and third class. We see that the highest percentage of people, 55% were third class, not too surprising because not everyone can afford the higher classes, but maybe a little bit more surprisingly, the next highest was first class. 24% uh, about was first class with 20, about 21% in the second class. So this is helpful because we'll do analysis later on. We'll, we'll basically separate people based on class and see what the survival rates are for each class. And the male-female ratio, probably not too surprisingly, we have about twice as many uh, males on board as females. That's probably just kind of a artifact of the time. Uh, you know, men were privileged, uh, were able to afford these things more. Or maybe some single men were coming on board. Uh, probably more likely for a single man to come on the tent headache than a single woman, for example, at this time. So that's kind of a good, it, it helps us get a view of what we're looking at. It, it's very interesting to see that the, uh, for example, mean age was about 30 years old, that the, the average person on board was about 30 years old. Um, and some of the other things were very interesting as well. For example, the fare, especially when we put it back and we adjust for inflation, it's, it's interesting to see how much money they actually paid to be on this trip uh, and things like that.
So probably more interesting now. Those are all things about one column each, not relations between columns. Now we're going to look at correlation, uh, basically how much one column goes with another or uh, whether one column has high values when another one has high values or low values. So just a kind of refresher for you guys, if you don't remember, a correlation um, close to one means that the two, two columns are very highly correlated. High values of one occur with high values of the other. Correlation near negative one is the opposite, which means that high values of one occur with low values of the other one. And a correlation of zero means that they're not really, they have no real impact on each other and no real effect on each other. Um, and that probably tells us they're not really worth looking at later down the road when we do our regressions and other models. So how you do this, um, it's very routine again. You just go and you type equals corel, and that's an Excel function. And you just it just takes in the two columns that you want the correlation of. So for, we'll do survived versus fair. So, and we'll just fill in the other columns in that same fashion. Now, as they're being filled in here, we can kind of talk about, it. for example, survival versus fair is positive, which means that the more you paid, the more likely you are to survive, but it's not too strong. It's not very close to one. Uh, the next thing is survival versus sex. So the higher, so now we have to think about it higher since one is female, it means the more female you are, the basically, if you're female, uh, you have a better chance of survival. Uh, now we have, we see that first negative number, negative 0.03. That's very small, so it's not too interesting. Um, it kind of tells us that how many siblings or spouses you have doesn't really have an impact on your survival. Same thing with parents, children. Age, again, same kind of thing, which is interesting, um, but it does tell you that the lower age has more probability of survival, um, which makes sense because maybe if you're more agile, you can get off faster to lifeboats and things like that. Uh, but interesting to see is passenger class is our highest uh, magnitude one so far, which means that the lower your passenger class, you have a much better chance of survival. So basically, the more close to first class you are, the better chance of survival, not surprisingly. Now we have a few different ones. These are not about survival. These are kind of um, explanatory factors on other explanatory factors. So age on fair is pretty low, not really worth mentioning. Kind of same thing with age on sex. Um, age on sibling spouse, we see that we, again, get a low factor. This is in the same magnitude, same ballpark as survival to P class, um, the last one in that green column. So that says that the fewer uh the, the fewer siblings and spouses you have the greater your age is um maybe that makes sense maybe we can talk about that later and the same kind of story is being told for parent children so the fewer parent children you have the greater your age is um i guess that's not too obvious because parents children it's it's kind of a trade-off um the, the older you get the more uh children you might have the less parents you might have i guess um possibly so and the last thing we looked at is siblings and versus parent children so this kind of makes sense because the more parent children you have the more sibling spouses you have it's kind of just says a big family is a big family so this is actually very crucial initial work that we've done we've gotten a list of summary statistics we've seen which things which uh factors are not really correlated with each other for example uh survival with sibling spouse maybe we won't really look at that because that negative 0.03 is not very promising towards helping explain survival based on how many siblings and spouses you have but for example uh, survival versus p class that is a very big magnitude so maybe we will look at that in our regressions in the next video so this is all very important um, for both explaining your work to others. Um, if someone just asks you, oh, so what's the mean age? And you can just tell them right away. And it's also important for when you go forward, it's important to just have a sense, have a kind of like uh, an innate sense of which factors are correlated with uh, which other factors, how big certain factors are. So in the next video, we'll be looking into regressions. We'll be looking at uh, logistic regression, uh, try to figure out survival based on a few of the factors that we're seeing in this table. So until next time.